Welcome to the Butler Beat. I'm Ari Algier. And I'm Ari Castle. Butler University is grieving this week after the announcement of Professor Paul Sandin's death. Sandin was a senior communications professor and the director of the Butler Speakers Lab. Sandin came to Butler in 1996 and developed the Speakers Lab. According to the Butler Collegian, it has grown from serving 18 students that first semester to over 2,000 students now. Communications professor Dr. David Waite explains the impact the Speakers Lab has had on students. But the remarkable thing is how he's empowered the students. They run it themselves. The one thing they really wanted to emphasize was we need to be professionals and this is what Professor Sandu would want. We need to do this. And he's really given them the ability to uh, uh, you know, organize and to run such a wonderful organization. A memorial service for Professor Sandin was held over the weekend in the Riley Room. It was a celebration of his life where all in attendance were encouraged to share stories of their time with him. In other news from College of Communications, Butler senior Laura Lepkowski is this year's winner of the Pi Kappa Delta National Championship. The popular TV show Glee is the subject of her award-winning paper. Lepkowski says Glee has some positive messages that are subtly presented to the viewers. The messages that it wants you to see are ones that it's actually going against cultural stereotypes. So it's going against the cultural norms and it's trying to be uplifting and empowering to people that are, I guess, picked on and stuff like that in school. However, upon for further analysis and going really into depth in the episode, it actually supports the dominant ideologies because it's further portraying them and actually representing those images. Lepkowski is a biology and communications major. Well, it's that time of the year again when the fraternity houses around campus bring out their lawn chairs and big toys and yell for your money. Believe it or not, there is actually a reason behind the madness. I walked around Fraternity Row to check it out. Walking around campus, you may have noticed a few new attractions. It's Philanthropy Week here at Butler. Yeah, uh, this week we are having our annual teeter-totter marathon to support Peyton Manning Insurance Hospital. It's not just teeter-totters, it's also trampolines and some tricycles. This week's Strike Week is our Spring Philanthropy for Delta Tau Delta. Just like at Lambda Chi, Delta Tau Delta is also participating in Philanthropy Week. And it benefits Riley Children's Hospital and specifically the Ed Seaver Fund. Uh, we're just trying to raise money for uh, children to have toys and stuffed animals for extended stays during their time in Riley. These props have an important purpose. It's a giant attention grabber. We're just trying to make sure that people are aware of our cause and uh, hoping that they can donate. DG participated by putting out a trampoline. Their event is raising money for the Alzheimer's Association. Houses are all working hard to raise money. Uh, we'll be out here all week, 24 hours a day for the whole week. And what does it take to sit on teeter-totter for 24 hours? You definitely need to have, uh, have some definite endurance because uh, these things chafe, actually, if you ride them for long enough. This is the first time that Butler has put three philanthropy events in the same week, but none of the houses view this as a competition. Whether students are riding on tricycles, sitting on a teeter-totter, or even jumping on a trampoline, they're all for a good cause. In the end, that's all that really matters. For the Butler Beat, I'm Mark Castle. If you haven't noticed, that big cement structure next to Clues Hall is growing fast and nearing completion. And Jordan College of Fine Arts couldn't be more excited. Reporter Ashley Davis has the update. The construction of the Schrott Center is going as expected, even though it began with a delay. The $13 million new Performing Arts Center will benefit all the departments within JCFA. So there'll be music performances there, theater performances, dance performances. There are even plans for um, the, the, the lobby area and different parts of the theater to be used for exhibits of art. The lobby will have red carpet with a black accent color. It will have 450 seats in the audience and will feature a large enough stage for performances in each department. It is smaller than Clues Hall, but bigger than IT Bethlehem Hall, which is what the college needed. Small in terms of the audience capacity, with still a very large stage, which is what uh, the large music ensembles need, which is what dance needs. Whereas theater needs a more intimate atmosphere. This made it a big challenge to respond to the conflicting needs, but there is also a financial benefit for JCFA. Uh, contractually, every year JCFA pays to use clues for concerts. Uh, that's money that 
we won't have to find in the budget every year. Uh, and it'll help other departments because they can do lectures in there instead of includes, which will save them money. There is hope that not only students will benefit from the new facility, but outside performers as well. It'll definitely help the music department just because we have so many performances among majors, but I mean, it'll also help a lot of the other departments. And hopefully, if we have the Schrott Center, then we can bring in like outside performers and stuff, which will hopefully help the university as well. The Schrott Center is expected to be complete early next year, and the grand opening will be a gala featuring all the departments of JCFA. For the Butler Beat, I'm Ashley Davis. Butler's Peers Advocating Wellness for Students, or PAWS, provides peer education programming for students throughout the year. In recognition of PAWS efforts, the Bacchus Peer Education Network named the organization the 2012 Outstanding Affiliate in Area 7 at its annual conference. Peer education programs from Indiana, Kentucky, Michigan, and Ohio also attended. Members of PAWS presented on two topics, and so students from other campuses across the country or across the region actually had an opportunity to hear about um, our wellness model and how we incorporate it into our programming here on campus and also learn about the offerings and events that are a part of our Stress Less Week. The Stress Less Week provides activities and resources to students the week before finals. The activities offered over the week are also accessible to students over the year. Events include massage therapy and playtime with dogs. With Stress Less Week and finals just around the corner, Brooke Lewis gives us the scoop on some tips for success. It's getting close to that time of the year again. The semester is starting to wind down and finals are quickly approaching. What does this mean? It's time for students to buckle down and start the tedious studying that awaits them. Here are some tips to study more efficiently. First, don't wait till the last minute to start studying. Finals will be here before you know it, so start the process early. Next, study in a place that suits you. Some people like the Science Library at Irwin, while others prefer sitting inside of Atherton at Starbucks. Find what works for you. Students tell us where they like to study. Um, I like to study in Jordan because I can spread out and use the whiteboards. Um, I like to study in Irwin Library in the Great Books Room because there's a lot of table space and you and more than one person can go in there. So if you need to talk, you can without disturbing other people. Personally, when I study, I like to be in my comfy clothes sitting in the soft spaces of Fairbanks. Butler has many resources available on campus to help students study or get tutored before final exams. One of the biggest is the Learning Resource Center inside of Jordan Hall. Students are encouraged to take advantage of these tools in order to have greater academic success. Finals will come and go and students will be released for summer. But until then, remember to pace yourself and not to panic. For the Butler Beat, I'm Brooke Lewis. Many Butler students love Tom's shoes. Not enough to go without them. An event was put over Facebook last week for a day without shoes to support Tom's. But on Tuesday morning, the cold drove most students to keep them on. One of the students who helped start the event says she was a little disappointed, but there's always next year. I've been really excited about the idea since I've been in high school because you, can, you can't really like not wear shoes in high school. It's part of the dress code, so I was excited to finally get to college and be able to go without shoes for a day. Tom's Shoes donates shoes to kids in need for every shoe purchased. It has been an up and down year for the Butler women's tennis team. With the season nearing an end, the dogs are looking to scrap their way back into conference title contention. Reporter Becca Bornhorst reports. Number one single star Caroline Hedrick at the beginning of season made winning difficult, but the ladies are looking to bounce back. Well, I mean, we've definitely been having some difficulty with our winning, obviously, but um, we're definitely working on getting consistent and keeping balls in play and actually working a point versus just hitting out or making errors on our own. Senior Cam Thompson says this is crunch time and the girls are working hard to snatch up as many wins as possible. We all want to go out there and the main goal with our coach is that we go out there and we don't just give effort because we're all going to give effort that day but there's a difference he told us between giving effort and actually competing. So we want to go out there in every single match all the way down from one to six singles and three doubles all the way through. We actually want to compete well and win every match. Conference tournament is right around the corner and assistant coach Olivia Pedro knows that consistency is key in order for this Butler team to succeed. 
I feel like it's the strongest conference I've seen in a while. There's some smart teams that know how to play well, um, not only hit hard or hit well, but they also play smart. Um, so that's going to be challenging. I think each match is going to be um, as tough as the next. So um, I guess just getting one round at a time. Ultimately, we'd love to, to win and be in the finals there. Um, but who knows who it'll be against this year. It's tough. Thompson says she thinks it is possible for the Bulldogs to win the tournament. But what we need to focus on is just, first of all, trying to get seeded for the tournament. That way we don't run into like one of the top, like one or two seeds the first match, and then we actually have a better shot. But I think we do have a good shot if we're all sitting there and actually competing, focusing, and keeping our cool during the matches as well. When I caught up with the team last week, they were practicing inside Butler's tennis bubble right here behind me. According to Coach Pedro, though, they must start practicing outdoors on a regular basis in order to prepare for tournament weather conditions. For the Butler Beat, I'm Becca Bornhorst. The Butler softball team is in the thick of the conference standings after starting off the month of April with five consecutive wins. Reigning Horizon League Pitcher of the Year, Jenny Esparza explains how the squad is hitting on all cylinders. I think the team's attitude has definitely changed since the beginning. We have, a, we're just a lot more positive now and we have confidence in ourselves and also the way we're playing, we're actually hitting the ball now. The Bulldogs will enjoy a six-game homestand this week, starting tomorrow against Wright State. That wraps up the first segment of this week's Butler Beat. I'm Mary Algier. And I'm Ari Castle. Shelby Sebring will be up next with guest Bree Seaver and Maria Santa. Stay tuned.